Hey guys, Caitlin here, and for this week's video, I want to talk about vertigo. I had a patient come in last week, and they had the chief complaint of vertigo, and I immediately thought, oh, this is probably the benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or BPPV, um, but then I quickly reminded myself that vertigo can be an emergency, and I had to rule out some things first. So, let's get started. The first thing I like to ask when a patient has vertigo is what are their symptoms? Because it could just be dizziness. A vertigo patient will have the sensation that the room is spinning around them. Dizziness will just be a vague unsteadiness or lightheadedness. And just remember that the physical manifestation of vertigo is that nystagmus that you'll see with extraocular eye movements. So after you've established that the patient is having vertigo and they're not just dizzy, I like to classify what type of vertigo they are having. And the two classifications are peripheral and central. If the patient is having peripheral vertigo, they can have horizontal and fatigable nystagmus. And sometimes if you have BPPV, you might have torsional. Also, if you have central vertigo, then you may have vertical and continuous nystagmus. And this can also have some torsional nystagmus. If it's central, then you might have other cranial nerve abnormalities motor or sensation losses, or gait instability. And if it's central vertigo, usually imaging is required to kind of figure out what is going on. There could be brain tumors in the cerebellum or the brain stem. You could have an acoustic neuroma, multiple sclerosis, or just cerebral vascular disease. While imaging is usually required to figure out the etiology of central vertigo, just a further history from the patient will help you diagnose the peripheral vertigo. If the patient is having vertigo after certain head position changes, then you can assume BPPV. The patient will have vertigo that will last less than a minute and will come on with certain head changes. If the patient is having episodic vertigo with fluctuating hearing loss and tinnitus, then it is safe to assume that they might have Meniere's disease. And if the vertigo is continuous, sudden onset after an upper respiratory infection, you can assume vestibular neuritis or labyrinthitis if they also have hearing loss. Now, all things considered, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo is still the most common cause of vertigo. BPPV is most commonly attributed to the calcium debris within the posterior semicircular canal, known as canalithiasis or otoconia, which is pictured here. While symptoms can be troublesome, the disorder usually responds to treatment with particle repositioning maneuvers an office-based procedure, and one that patients can also be taught to do at home. To test this, you can do the Dix hall pike maneuver, and then the treatment is called the Epley maneuver. So, when first evaluating for BPPV, you need to do the Dix hall pike maneuver. So take your patient, have them sit on the bed with their legs extended, and you need to test one side and then the other and see which side has worse symptoms or worse nystagmus. So let's just start with the left side with her. So I have her turn her head to the left 45 degrees, hold this position, and then quickly lower the patient down and see if they have any nystagmus. So look into their eyes and then ask them, are you having any symptoms? So we'll go back up. And then you repeat the same thing with their head turned 45 degrees to the right. And the Epley maneuver is just the beginning of the Dix Hall Pike maneuver and then you keep going from there. So let's just say she had worse symptoms when her head was turned to the left. So again, we turn her head to the left, 45 degrees, and then quickly lower her, but then stay in this position for 30 to 60 seconds. And then after doing so, you rotate their head to the right by 90 degrees so that their head will be rotated to the right 45 degrees if they were looking up. And then hold this position for 30 to 60 seconds and then you have the patient roll over on their right and kind of keep their head and neck in the same position so they are now looking down at the floor with their nose pointed down. Hold this position for another 30 to 60 seconds and then you can go ahead, swing their legs around and bring them up while keeping their head to the right at 45 degrees. You can do this up to three times and symptoms should improve from there. And that's it. So just to review, the first thing you need to do with a patient that has vertigo as their chief complaint is figure out if it's actually vertigo and not just dizziness. So a vertigo patient will have the room spinning and they also have nystagmus. 
And then next you need to clarify whether it's peripheral or central vertigo. And figuring out what the causes of those peripheral and central vertigo, the central usually need imaging and other history can give you some clues, but imaging will usually give you the definitive diagnosis. And then with peripheral vertigo, you just need to take a further history on the type of vertigo, how long it's lasting, and then associated hearing loss and tinnitus. And that's it, guys. See you next Wednesday.